Today's show is brought to you by the Ultimate Draft Kit. It's not just a regular draft kit, it's Ultimate. Ultimate. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Andy Holloway, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, the Fantasy Footballers. Thursday, July 18th. Fun, fun show today. Oh. Doing a mock draft. We've got uh, the Borg Gogan joining us as well. Kyle will have the worst team. Yeah, I mean, Kyle is contributing. He, he's, he has got the, the toughest job today. Why is that? Drafting against the three of us? Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing a mock draft with us. But he's not going to talk a lot, and we're going to talk about his team. Yeah. I just don't think that's great for okay, him. Okay, okay. I see what you're saying. Uh, however, he does have... Uh, yeah, I mean, TBD by the end of the draft, but one would think, you know, the best of the selections. We are sitting there six, seven, eight, nine, and uh, I don't like that I'm the nine. I'm gonna be honest. You're gonna with like you. it on the on the way back. Yeah, on the the less valuable round. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, for those that are new to the show, Kyle is the host of our DFS podcast and our Dynasty podcast, and so um. Yeah, he does a bunch of stuff, though. He just had a writer's call with all of our writers last night as well. Indeed. Our awesome staff of, uh, I mean, there's articles going up every day. Valuable stuff. And Kyle runs it all. So uh, he's going to join us today for ridicule, which should be fun. So we'll get to the mock draft shortly. Uh, a couple of things. UltimateDraftKit.com, if you want to check that out right now. We're also going to be live in Los Angeles. Palace Theater, Jason. Yeah, and apparently it's going to be August 24th because I've been telling people August 26th. And if you show up on August 26th, then it's just going to be me and you. Buddy. Who have you been telling that? Well, yesterday, yesterday, Mister. Yeah, the, the you, day. you tried to tell my parents that you were you, the old trying to sabotage me. Yeah, no, it's just really whenever I've talked to someone in person and they've been like, "Oh yeah, when's the live show?" Yeah, it's August 26th. <laughs> So I, I hope I'm not confusing people now. It is not. It's super not that date. No, it is August 24th. If you're curious, that's a Saturday. Baller, not a Monday live show, a <laughs> Saturday live show. Ballerslive.com if you want to jump in, and um, we'd love to have you. We're going to do some very special stuff at the live show. It's our 10th anniversary celebration. All right, let's talk a little news. News and notes from around the league. 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk has officially requested a trade. He is in year five of his rookie deal. The <laughs> this is a uh, like this one's hot. This one in the CD Lamb like that's it, it's contract negotiations negotiations to watch. <laughs> that, uh, that was you a tried tough one. It, you tried a second time. And yeah, it was but the uh, same word. Well, sometimes you got to bail out. That's how I would say it with no tooth. Negotiation. Negotiation. <laughs> and the the 49ers historically have taken these things up to the wire. Now we had Debo, like at one point Debo Samuel was saying, trade me off of this team. He got an extension. Other guys on the team who have gotten, you know, big time contracts, it comes in training camp or even sometimes right before the season starts. So this is not unusual for San Francisco it's just it if you have Ayuk I mean it is the next layer of negotiation yes. yeah it's unfortunate that it has to come to this and uh San Francisco though of of how they usually do these things late I don't think they had anticipated the summer of the wide receiver happening where every single wide receiver of note was getting crazy amounts of money and then they added Ricky Pearsall, which I think 
muddies this situation there. If you're the 49ers, you're thinking, well, we've we've got another great wide receiver. Did they bring him in to be the third, or did they have a plan to to move either of these other guys? It's it's TBD right now. Uh, I think the expectation is that everyone will be there in San Francisco for this year as they try to win a championship. But you could be moving to a point where Brandon Ayuk is the next T. Higgins situation. Where, From where he departs. Just in contract. He, yeah, okay. where he, he doesn't want to be a part of this team anymore because – you know, things break down if something doesn't happen. Like, wouldn't we say the highest likelihood right now is not traded, not contracted? I, I, I think that's the most likely outcome right now. I think I think he gets a contract. I do, too. This offseason. Yes, I do. I think they figure it out. But, like, mm -hmm. as of right now, it looks like – I guess just the, the biggest thing is I'm with Jason. Then. Ayuk is on the 49ers this year. That That is – they're trying to win. And trading away Ayuk doesn't Just say it. Is, just say help. it, you coward. Say it's a guarantee. I guarantee Brandon Ayuk is on the 49ers this team, or this year. <laughs> the contract extension, Clip that's, it. I just Clip believe it. it. Freeze, so, it freeze it cool takes. So we can play this and with triumphant and, and noise behind it when yeah, I'm right? Do not think it could be better than Jason guaranteeing Cortland Sutton's situation <laughs> that he's not getting a contract, and by the end of recording, he had money in his pocket. I believe it was by the end of the sentence. <laughs> it yeah, was. it was <laughs> mid-show. Uh, Brandon Ayuk right now, going in the late second round. It's I like Ayuk, but that's that's rich for me. Debo is third round, and Kittle is a sixth round pick. So you talk about the receivers on the team. Any of those values you like? Or uh, I, I guess you don't you don't like. I, I think the Ayuk ADP is is a bit too high. I'm perfectly happy taking Debo right there, and I'll take Kittle as the tight end seven. Yeah, I agree completely. All right, do we have any other news we need to talk about? Well, it's just sort of related is is said first round wide receiver of the 49ers, Ricky Pearsall is on the non-football injury list to start camp. Just means he got injured away from team activities. Now, Jason, you have a pretty strict Halloween policy when it comes to you won't dress up as something without a beard. That is correct. Because I'm, I did it once I'm and I learned Rick, a lesson. I, I'm seeing Ricky Pearsall with a beard. That, you know how much tattooing I got to do if I'm going to go as Pearsall? I'm just saying, if you want to be hip and cool, Pearsall's your dude. You're He's got a much better hairline. <laughs> I'm going to have to work. I'm going to have to do some painting. You're going to have to do some real sculpting of the mustache, too. That thing is too sculpted. That thing is finely manicured. Yeah, manicured is the right word for Ricky Pearsall. He is a manicured yes. man. Man. Yeah, yeah, you could do it. <laughs> yes. I'm just I look. I've got to keep these options open because you're a coward and won't do anything but a bearded person. Right, hundred percent. Well, said. some of us dressed up like you know took a, a a bigger leap. Hey, I I shaved down to a mustache for Jeff Fisher. Uh, Daniel Jones won't be placed on the. And you said you'll never do it again. <laughs> yeah, lessons are learned sometimes in life. Daniel Jones won't be placed on the pup. Oh, for training camp, that's. I mean, uh, that's good news for him. Do you have any, um, like, deep beneath the surface secret ideas that he might be okay? Mm. Malik Neighbors is a big deal. Like, it, it could work for the passing game. If you're talking about just Daniel Jones, the fantasy quarterback, him off of the ACL, I'd, like, his secret value was he ran way more than you would expect. And I don't expect that to happen. They this really year. haven't had the kind of weapons that they dreamed up for him. Like even the Darren Waller yeah, situation. Yeah, that's fair. He was hurt during part of the year, and then Jones was injured. It, it just – they're obviously all in on Daniel Jones. If you if you watch the hard knocks and the departure of Saquon Barkley, it's like, hey, Let's Daniel see. Jones is going to either break through this year or we're going to know – we're going to know by the end of this year what we need to do. It is it is really funny from that hard knocks how much they seem like they are totally 100% in on Daniel Jones. They paid him. They want to improve the offensive line and get him a weapon. Unless Drake May is available. <laughs> and then they were, they're like, oh, man, we'll trade a lot for Drake that's, May. That's true. But his, So Daniel Jones' contract, I mean, even next year, I'm looking at over the cap, you're talking a $20 million dead cap situation so like not that teams aren't afraid to eat that this these days you know, look at the russell wilson contract but that's that's hard to stomach quarterbacks right now two is not paid right 
Correct. So two correct. has not been paid. Dak's not been paid. Correct. Mm-hmm. Those are the two really big um, contracts that need to get done. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's jump right in. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right. Today, Kyle is drafting with us. He will have the six spot. I'm at, uh, or I'm sorry, Mike is at seven. I'm at eight, Jason at nine. Back to back to back to back. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, two flex, one tight end, four bench spots. Uh, basically our league of record format, half PPR, and uh, we'll jump right into it. Kyle is going to be the first on the clock here. Christian McCaffrey goes number one. Then Tyreek, CD, Bijan, Amon Ra, and Kyle has gone with, he's already made the selection, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase off the board at 106. Kyle, yeah, he is with us. How do you feel about your pick, Kyle, on a scale of, of one to six? Six. Okay. Uh, oh feels, man. So, so I mean, so you're not confident. Yeah. He only uh, he only thinks his pick is a six. That's so embarrassing. Jamar Chase at 106 behind Amon Ra. Do you think you're going to see that a lot? I I don't. I think Jamar Chase will usually go ahead of Amon Ra St. Brown. I know some rankings have him flip. I don't blame anyone for. I mean, Amon Ra's awesome. Yeah. You want to take him higher? You know, go for it. I am very very in on Jamar Chase. Uh, this season, Joe Burrow. I, I think that the Bengals' offense is going to be outstanding, so I would have taken Chase over Amon Ross St. Brown, and Kyle just got lucky. Well, Chase to Kyle. Mike, you're on the clock. Thought process here in the first is a 12-team league. So looking at the way that this has unfolded, uh, you know, Jefferson is still there, and uh, it's between two players, honestly, for me. It's between... Uh, Justin Jefferson and Brees Hall, and I'm going to start my mock draft for this one. I'm going to go with Brees Hall. A, I think, uh, I think we're all in agreement that McCaffrey, Bijan, Brees, like it would not be surprising in the least for 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 Bijan and or Brees to finish number one over McCaffrey. Like it, I don't think it's crazy for that to happen. So to grab him at the back of the first and start it off with that setting up perhaps. Uh, hero RB build, we'll see, but I'd be real happy with Brees here. Right now, if you look at our consensus tiers in the UDK, Tyreek and Lamb are in a tier of their own. Right. Amon Ra and Jamar Chase are in a second tier. The The next group, Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua. So I would be at the top of a tier drafting wide receiver here. But it's it's still a tier you want to be a part of. It's absolutely a tier I want to be a part of, nor would I have the option to get the bottom of the tier because they're all going to be gone by the time they come around. I'm just explaining. I wanted to bring in the UDK and how we break down our rankings a little bit more. Um, So, you know, I I normally try to go running back. If I did go running back here, I'm probably drafting Jameer Gibbs in a half PPR, 12-team league, a couple of flexes. Um, I feel more comfortable filling those flexes up later on at the wide receiver position uh, while the running backs dry up. I'm between Jefferson and Gibbs and okay. trying to decide as a mock draft what experiment would I rather uh, go through here. I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs. I'm going to go with Gibbs and leave Jason the uh, the difficult decision <laughs> between, I imagine, Kyron Williams and Justin Jefferson. Um, so this this is this is great. No, Justin Jefferson is not in consideration here for me. Um, okay, then I'm going to – it's the full timeout. What do you put the odds are – because this is where Jefferson's going. Like He's not being completely and utterly disrespected, but he still is, in my opinion – like the best wide receiver in football, what is what's the percentage chance you you're like taking on the risk of? We all look really dumb at the end of the year, and you go, oh yeah, the the guy who I thought was the best wide receiver in football is in fact the best wide receiver in football. I I don't think that that's going to happen. If you're talking about finishing as the number one fantasy yes, option, no, I mean. I I, ju- I don't see that as a range of what outcome. What about two? When it's Sam, one or two? 
I, I don't I don't think so. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I love Justin Jefferson. I would take him here in a couple One spots. One of these from days here. I'm going to hear what he's not saying. But <laughs> whether he likes it or yeah. not. But but um it's just touchdowns. Like rookie quarterbacks don't throw a lot of touchdowns. Sam Darnold's going to start the year at some point the transition will be made. I, I just don't believe that the ceiling is there. He's going to be awesome. He's going to have 1500 yards, but you know, he's he's not going to have nine touchdowns. And so I want a guy who could have 1,500 yeah. yards and 10 touchdowns, and there's one on the board. I mean, Tua led the league in passing. That's Tyreek's quarterback. CeeDee Lamb with Dak, yep. amazing. Amon Ra's got golf, great offense. Jamar Chase has Burrow. Um, even going beyond Justin Jefferson, right? A.J. Yeah. Brown. Exactly. Who's going to be my pick? Okay, yeah, Ooh, A.J. Brown okay. is ranked. I mean, one of the things that made the difference for me on not taking Jefferson, I wanted the name. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. When you get to 108 and you're sitting there with Jefferson, you're like, that sounds pretty sexy, but I got AJ Brown ranked higher too. Yeah, when I, so was, I wasn't willing to do it. Yeah, I've got him ranked higher. Um, I I want that offense um, of the Eagles over the Vikings, and so when I was on the clock or when I was two picks away, I wanted Gibbs or AJ Brown. So when I heard you say you were between Jefferson and Gibbs, I was very very happy. I'm gonna take AJ Brown, and you're right. I am hoping for Kyron Williams to make it back to me, which I, he he should on ADP. He's been at the like two three turn. So I'm reaching for him here, but I am going to do that. Get a wide receiver and a running back. Uh, you can you could say who went in between. So uh, just real quick, a note for Justin Jefferson to remember. The the games with Kirk were, were fantastic. People will remember those. But the four full games that he played, not with Kirk, you know, we're talking – we got some Nick Mullins games here. He was the wide receiver 26, but he still put up 12 points. So that's not the end of the world. Then he was the wide receiver six with 23, a disaster of a week against Green Bay. And then final uh, week 18, 30 points, wide receiver two. So three of the four games with Nick Mullins and uh, technically Jaron Hall started one. The bad was, one. He, yeah. So technically he started that one. But three of four, double digits, two of four, 20 plus. Just, I mean. I don't see a world where Justin Jefferson doesn't finish as a wide receiver one. Okay. You know, it, the, like he's going to he's going to have enough volume and he's so good that he should be a a wide receiver one. I just think he's going to be a back half wide receiver one this season, not a top half. And right now in the first round, I'm trying to draft someone that has the potential to be the, you know, the wide receiver one. All right. After AJ Brown, we had Jefferson, Jonathan Taylor, Puka Nakua finishing the first round. We'll take a break and hit the second round. All right, uh, first round, Kyle went with Jamar Chase. Mike has Brees Hall. I have Jameer Gibbs. Jason with A.J. Brown. The gamble, it couldn't have paid off better for Mr. 109 because Jefferson, Taylor, Nakua, then Harrison, Barkley, and Garrett Wilson. I I, I wouldn't. I don't know you if you don't take Kyron Williams here. Well, and you do know me. I am taking <laughs> Kyron Williams. Uh, he, You know, Look, I, I realize that there is risk in this pick. You know, the the low equity in him, the fact that they drafted Blake Corum. I, I d there was a lesson learned. We have our Things to Remember episode every year, and one of the things to remember is if a guy was great on the NFL field and they draft a backup, don't just assume they're going to come in. Because we made this mistake last year with Charbonnet and with Tank uh, Bigsby, and so Etienne was fine. Walker was the dude to start before he got injured. And so I think Kyron's going to be great. He was the running back two on a points-per-game basis, just barely behind Christian McCaffrey, way ahead of Raheem Mostert, who's number three. All right, I am up next after Kyron, which is wild. He could have uh, just won, won Jason away. Um, I'll go with Travis Etienne. I have him ranked extremely highly. I, uh, I like the value in the middle of the second round on Etienne, and so I will, I will turn there. Um, I was going to take a quick glance at our running back tiers. Uh, again, that would be our kind of uh, consensus tiers. Tier three right now is Kyron, Jonathan Taylor. They're both gone. Saquon, he's gone. And then right now we have Etienne, Pacheco, and Rashad White all in the same group. I look at Etienne a tier higher than Pacheco and Rashad White, and so I will go with Etienne in the second round. All right, that puts me on the clock. Brees Hall holding it down as my anchor running back. I'm looking at the wide receivers. Now, ADP-wise, it's listed as Drake London, Devontae Adams, Chris Olave, Brandon Ayuk, and then Nico Collins. 
So I have Nico Collins in my top 10, and I don't think that he makes it back. So if I'm going to go wide receiver, that's I'm willing to jump uh, a little bit with the ADP there. The running backs are <laughs> they're re- these are really interesting guys of just of Devon Achan, Derrick Henry. I mean, it could be league winning players, legitimately both of those guys, or they could be like, man, that, that's really disappointing that I took those guys in the second. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Nico here. I want a top ten of my rankings wide receiver, at least one of them. And I would not get one should I uh, pass on Nico here. Well, that gives Kyle the opportunity to jump in immediately and select Chris Olave. So Chase Olave with the first two picks. Um, Jason and Mike both split positions. Kyle went double wideout. I went double running backs. So after Olave was London, Ayuk, Devontae Adams, Josh Allen, Devon A. Chan, and then the third round, Kelsey at the 301. Not, you know, not where he was before. Yeah. Uh, Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry yeah. go in the third round. That being said, team one, Christian McCaffrey, Devon Achan, and Travis Kelsey. That's that is, fun. That's swinging for the fences, man. Yeah, that's a fun start. And then Laporta goes at 304, Debo at 305, and then Kyle comes back. And you went with Pacheco, Kyle? Yeah, he was the highest running back in our tiers, uh, and I didn't feel comfortable with anybody else. I think it's a great pick. Pacheco yeah. uh, should get a lot of work for a Kansas City Chiefs team that should rebound to closer to what they've been scoring the previous five years this, than what they did last season. This is exactly the situation that frightens me with Pacheco because this is the – this is the like if he was your second running back because he went, let's say, went A-chan in the second round, mm-hmm. I'm comfortable. But okay. this is this is the first year that we're going to be in a position where if you go a couple of running backs or you get a value on Pacheco, you're saying you're my one, you're my yeah. number one, and that is, you know, that's something he he did for four or five weeks at the end of the year to great effect and the playoffs, and now it's it's the um, it's the level up right, it's the tear jump. I mean, also on the season though, even it took it took time last year for him to really take the, the trust and really take over the backfield, but he by the end of the year on a per game basis was seeing 78% of the running back attempts, which is that's the fourth highest mark of running backs. And you combine that with a 10% target share. And that was last year, the 10% target share. It's like if McKinnon really stays off of this roster, that could even go up. So I really like Pacheco. When I was doing the math, I figured it would come down to two players, Pacheco being one of them. So I will take the other one. I will be taking Jalen Waddle, who – if you haven't tuned in recently, I expect a massive bounce back. Like when you really dive into what Waddle did last year when he was healthy, and it's just it's so murky and bogged down when you're just only doing the box score hunting of when he was hurt because he was really he was really just hurt the entire time. And when healthy was producing, he's not Tyreek, but I'm drafting him in the third round, and I think that like we said it. Tua led the league in passing yards. Like, he's going to compete for that yet again and get some of the, a couple more of those touchdowns over to Waddle, and you have a, a real value here in the third. Well, I I feel like I'm in a tough spot with Gibbs and ETN and not loving the wide receiver tier that is currently on the board where it's Evans and it's Diggs and DJ Moore and Michael Pittman. Um, when at the same time I see Rashad White, who's a tier two running or tier three running oh, back man. on our team. Ultra T. Oh brother. I just feel like I'm gonna be able to Was come this a mayhem episode? You're just going I mean, you you just load up after that, you'd be set at running back. And then you just load up at wide receiver the rest of the way. Did you wait <laughs> oh, was that a mayhem was that a mayhem video drop? Al Borland uh pulled some wires back there. <laughs> Do we need to evacuate? I think he that thought was just the mayhem lighting. I was okay. gonna say I thought that he thought the mayhem button would work and it didn't. But uh, no, um, the I, I'll tell you what I'm deciding between. I'm deciding between going Rashad White. It's a double flex league, and so um, you know the opportunity to play him each and every week, and have flexibility and depth at running back, right where you're gonna need it, or Jalen Hurts. My number two ranked quarterback really? here in the third. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what this looks no, like. No Mike Evans? 
Uh, a double flex? I'm going to see what it looks like with the double flex going Rashad White. So I'm oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had a whole play in set that was based on Jalen Hurts. You're going to take Hurts here? you darn right. I've been doing the, uh, doing the, the Jay Moore turn. I, this is an even better Jay Moore turn. I'm taking Hurts a, a few picks ahead of where he's been going at that 3-4 turn, but instead of Devontae Smith, I got A.J. Brown earlier, so I am going to go with the stack with Jalen Hurts. Mm. You know, I forgot you doing a mock Brown. draft with you, Jason, is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I because hope it's, it's not boring. Because it's one part analysis and one part you are sweaty. Yeah. You're a sweaty boy. You want <laughs> certain play. Boy. You want a certain player <laughs> in a certain spot. You're willing to manipulate it. Yeah, I'm selfish. Is what um, it is. You're, you know, you're so a sweaty you went, boy. I'm also a sweaty man. So uh, Jalen hurts. To Jason, then Mike Evans, Stephon Diggs, Lamar Jackson, um, Devontae Smith, Mahomes, and Stroud. So, Jason not only got the player he wanted, he started a quarterback run that meant three spots after he had a quarterback were taken up by not players <sighs> competing for who he wanted. That feels good. Yeah, it's it's. Really nice. I I've got taken the stack. Hurts. Oh man! <laughs> if you go back and watch the the film, when you brought up you you said you're between hurts. I was like, I look at the. Did camera your eyes like, get all big? Oh yeah. I was like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I wish I would have caught that. Um. All right. So here I am. I I've got Jalen Hurts. I've got one running back in Kyron Williams and one wide receiver in AJ Brown. So I I can go either direction, and I like I like a couple of guys in both categories. Uh, I'm a, a big fan of James Cook this year. He was the running back 11 last season, and he had two rushing touchdowns. I think that the vacated targets, they're the, the second most vacated targets in the league. That a lot of times goes to the running back position. Um, but I feel more confident loading up on wide receivers usually, letting later running backs be added to my team. I also think you know if this was a real league, I'd be more confident in adding from the waiver wire at the running back position. So I'm going to take a wide receiver and between DK Metcalf, who I have ranked as a top 10 wide receiver this season, or Malik Neighbors, who I just oh, – I haven't been able to – I haven't been able to grab him yet, and I'm not going to here because I, I do think if I've got someone that I believe is a top 10 wide receiver in the fourth round, I've got to take him. Uh, so I'll take Metcalf, but I am rising more and more and more on Malik Neighbors. I, I think he could be outstanding. This oh. is a real ultimate backfire. Because <laughs> after I took Rashad White, Metcalf was the was the com incoming was the target. target. So just to be clear, after I took the running back, you got to know your league, man. After I took the running back, I knew what that pick was when the draft started. No more running backs went. It was four quarterbacks and four wideouts. So you could have had Rashad White. Well, in, yeah, in that world, Rashad White, I guess you would have gone probably. But you talked about Malik Neighbors. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and draft Cooper Cup at the 405. Ooh. I'm going to take Cooper Cup, and he ends up slotting in as my wide receiver one. Uh, one of the insights that you'll see in the Ultimate Draft Kit, if you look at the red zone report, Cooper Cup had more targets, receptions, and touchdowns in the red zone than Puka Nakua did last year, and uh, that was with the injuries. So you're talking about a player that is fundamental to the offense that um, you know when you're looking at the names at this at this juncture – are you looking at players that, that can be inside that top 15 or players that you're more confident are going to sit kind of out just outside that group? I like Cooper Cup's upside, and so I'm going to give him, give him the shot. And I, I don't blame you for taking him over Neighbors when you're looking at your wide receiver one. Neighbors, we, you know, being a rookie paired with Daniel Jones, it's hard to really – I could have had you know, Jalen Hurts and Rashad White combo, though. Oh, that, that was who been. I was deciding between. That would have been really good. Or Jalen Hurts and DK Metcalf, even better. <laughs> oh, hot, spicy team. I love the nine spot, guys. Uh, I was going to say, favorites. how are you liking that? Well yeah, it's it's uh, one of That's my favorite spots. That's not the spots. only time this offseason we've mock drafted from like the eight or nine, and it's, uh, it's ended up really nice. All right, I am back on the clock. Uh, I feel like Nico Collins and Jalen Waddle have been your boys all summer. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm still feeling good with them. Yeah, in the second and the third, looking at the wide receivers, it it's not a at least in this tier of ADP. There's not a lot of names where like I have I have great confidence. DJ Moore, 
despite doing it last year, my confidence is lower. Malik neighbors, that would just, for me, that's a full YOLO. Like the the path for me, like just trying to think super logically, with the way that Malik neighbors pays off on this ADP, to me, it would be it would be madness. Like just pure craziness has happened with the Giants turning things around. Daniel Jones playing well enough. I know that Malik's going to get all the targets. I understand that, but that does just because you get all the volume. It doesn't always work out in for a fourth round pick, and so it's guys like that. But at the running back position, a player I've been I've been rising more on is James Cook, and like looking at what he did with the you know when the offensive scheme changed. There's no guarantee that's exactly what sticks, but they went to that. It was a winning formula. They got rid of Stephon Diggs, which the actions to me are that yeah we liked what happened when we started having James Cook as more of a focal point of this offense. So I think that he is very sneaky here. I think the biggest challenge for James Cook is the defensive, um, I guess, uh, what would you call it? The fact their defense has gone downhill and they've lost major pieces. Because In that second half, his targets per route run skyrocketed compared to the first half. I, I think I'm not talking this, about last year. I'm talking no, I'm, about for the upcoming year. If they, are, they can be put into a position where the efficiency and success of James Cook running the football – could be indicted by the defensive performance and more could fall on the back of Josh Allen. And, yes, I know James Cook can catch a pass, but that doesn't always translate the way you want it to for him to be a fundamental number one running back. Yeah, I mean, he he might end up being a, a running back too, but I do believe that w what the transition was made schematically uh, when Brady took over was the involvement in the passing game. So a, a worse defense, if they've got to keep scoring and, you know, they got to try to put up 35 points to win a game. That could also end up in Cooks's favor, just as a as a primary pass catching back. All right, the Borgogan went with Mark Andrews. Kyle, uh, feeling good about four, 407 it. Mark Andrews? Yeah, I think he's our highest tight end, but also it's at this point where Andrews or McBride, I feel like I want to take them the fourth or fifth in most drafts. Chase, Olave, Pacheco, Andrews. After the Andrews pick went DJ Moore, Mixon, McBride, Neighbors. In Pittman, Pittman at four twelve. That's interestingly, uh, late, I don't mind late, that. I think. Yeah, um, I like I Pittman was in consideration for me, but likewise, I was hoping that like man, if I get Pittman here, what are the chances I can get my Anthony Richardson Pittman stack? And I thought it was very very low, so I passed. Well, Richardson started the fifth round. Then Zay Flowers tanked Dale Amari Cooper and Kenneth Walker. Kyle, you're back on the board. You got two wideouts, a running back, a tight end. Where's your head at for 506? I like the running backs on the board. Like I like Alvin Kamara a lot, but I have Olave, so that does make me pause a little bit of going in there. And so I'm going to keep going with the wide receiver and just swing for the fences. And uh, I mean, is this George, George Pickens. Pickens' pick? <laughs> oh, it's George Pickens. Yeah, yeah that yeah. makes sense. Of course, um, I love it. It would have been my pick at 508. So. This draft's going great. Uh, <laughs> Mike, Brees Hall, Nico Collins, Jalen Waddle, James Cook. Uh, so, uh, uh, George Pickens, I figured he would be in contention for me. And this one is, like, it's, like, at least ADP-wise, it's probably, let me just double-check my, my rankings here. Yeah, it's, it's real chalky for me. The guy at the top of the wide receiver, it's T. Higgins. The, the wide receiver two for Joe Burrow. I don't mind him in the fifth at all. Or, uh, no, Alvin Kamara will be there for you too, Andy. Maybe. Dude, would you take four running backs? Let's find out because I'm going to take T. Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I, I really would consider Kamara there, but. I'm taking Alvin Kamara. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he did oh, it. Look at oh, this. my goodness. I wanted you the to take him. on this I guy. Wanted you to, I think the 508 value on Kamara is wild. It's I mean, great. It is. And look, <laughs> that pick doesn't happen if it's not double flex. That's for sure. But Gibbs, ETN, Rashad White, and Alvin Kamara, I don't have to sit them down. This is not that decision of I'm facing ADP value, right. and now I've got a bench player, and I've got to rotate them in and figure it out, but, but I'm just going to take them and figure it out. No. All four of those guys are in my starting lineup. I'm yeah. playing Gibbs, ETN, Rashad White, and Alvin Kamara, and uh, there's a there's a decent chance uh, that all three of those guys are in the top five in receptions at the position. Maybe the top three or four. 
Be, uh, Gibbs, you know, other than White mixing, and other than McCaffrey being in the mix, Gibbs, White, and Kamara could very well lead the league in receptions. They could. Uh, so that is something I'm not going to pass up on value wise. There, the uh, compared to the other options, I'm in. I'm already in a tier of wide receivers that makes me. I'm taking a chance. So You're, you are on a hero wide receiver build. Well, and I've I've got a quarterback I'd love to take, but I already know that the next four teams already took them. That's last time around, so I didn't need to take a, a a quarterback there. Yeah, I mean that's that's how you pay attention. Make sure you know you know the rest of the draft board. Don't just look at who's left. Look at who's you know on rosters that are between your next picks. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna build my team very very differently than yours, Andy. And I, I'm not even saying it's right or wrong. You're just saying with players that I would have drafted. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> saying that you have filled out your flex early, and I'm gonna do something I don't always love doing but I I think the value was there both spots and I'm going to take two different onesie positions within the first five is rounds a, is this Dalton Kincaid this is Dalton Kincaid okay. the way that I see the Bills transforming this year is it's going to be a lot of targets to Kincaid and Cook I think that they are going to be the real like leaders here uh of the offense did and you guys both pick them to win the division I don't Do you remember it from the show remember. a week ago? No, I don't remember. Uh, I, I picked the Dolphins but, to win the division. Yeah, and I picked the, uh, I think, I I think the I have, Jets. I think I have Buffalo still. Up yeah, I think you did. So, I mean, you know, they've won four in a row, and this year there's some doubt. And I don't – I think I think the Dolphins and Jets are right in the mix there. So you went Kincaid. Yeah. And you don't look happy because Aaron Jones, Kyle Pitts, James Conner, who maybe you had your eyes on, mm -hmm. uh, George I did, Kittle. I did. <laughs> yeah, George Kittle, Keenan Allen, and Christian Kirk. Well, you had a little mini tight end run there, so if you had gone Conner, you weren't getting Kincaid. No, and, uh, you know, I was between – I. there's three running backs that I liked right before me, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, James Conner. Um, I figured one of those two might make it back to me. And after the Kincaid, Mark Andrews, Laporta, McBride, Kelsey tight ends, I, I just want to punt it. I, I think all five of those have a chance to be the number one tight end this year. So now I'm in a pickle. Uh, I really wanted one of those running backs since I've only got Kyron Williams on the team. I think I'm going to keep punting running back and go more of a hero running back strategy and look at what wide receivers are on the board. And I don't love them. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not taking uh, – just looking at ADP right now. Changing Rome, your plan. Roma Dunes, hey <laughs> – uh, Terry McLaurin. These are guys I'm not super excited about. Jaden Reed. You want to uh, trade me Jalen Hurst for Rashad White? There is, there is a player that I actually do like. I wrote down on my board as we started the draft because I wanted to get this player in this draft. Um, I'm I'm rising on his ability, and he's higher <laughs> on wide receiver. Mystery man. Well, yeah, what it's is it's Xavier Worthy. Um, okay. This feels too early, though, for Xavier Worthy, and I I don't know that he'll make it back to me. But with only man, I Woo ah, yeah Talking okay. So well, we started well, <laughs> but here here in the six, I'm a little bit afraid about my depth at the flex position. Um, uh, based on who's on the board right now, <laughs> I'm gonna go with a guy that Andy has talked up quite a bit at the running back position, and it's gonna be Ramondre Stevens. Okay. Okay. I, I actually thought that the running back value with Montgomery or Stevens in there was the way to go, was, which is why I'm taking David Monk. No, I'm not. Oh. I'm not taking a fifth <laughs> running back. Also both Lions. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab um I'm gonna grab the quarterback that I wanted right now before I have no chance at it, which uh means Kyler Murray's gonna be joining the roster. I've got a long wait before my next pick. He's the last one in my in my select tier of uh quarterbacks. I talked about it on the show. I just traded Josh Allen for Kyler in at first, and I'm very excited about the season he has upcoming. So I'm going Kyler Murray at 605. Kyle just said he would have taken him the next mm. pick. Oh, yeah, Kyle? Is that uh, is that so? Yep, he would have been my pick. Well, Will Love is still there if you want him. Mike, you're on the clock first, though. So Kyler would have been in consideration for me as well. Excellent. Uh, consideration. And so now I just double checking what's going on with the quarterback. I have Higgins and I have Joe Burrow, you know, not that far away for like Kyler and, and Burrow are, are pretty close for me. So what I'd have that stack. Uh, meanwhile, Kyle is picking two spots between me or between my next pick. And 
He has Jamar Chase. Does he want that Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase stack? I do not know. And then I can have my fallback of Tua with Jalen Waddle. It, that's just that's my current stack opportunities. Now look at these wide receivers that Jason was uh, kind of poo-pooing. So Rome, Adunze, Terry McLaurin, Reed, Jordan Addison, Xavier, Xavier Worthy. Xavier Worthy. Yeah, I mean the upside of Xavier Worthy right here. It is it is somewhat appealing. It's interesting nah. that Worthy, <laughs> Hollywood, and Rashi Rice are all basically back to back in ADP. Man, we need that Rice suspension news. It, this is this is really obnoxious to be this far in the process uh, and not know. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would say that for purposes of the listeners, taking Xavier Worthy here is based upon an assumption that Rushy Rice will be out the beginning of the season. That could be a false assumption. If if we knew that Rice's suspension was going to 2025, oh yeah, that would not Rushy be a good Rice pick. Rice wouldn't for, even be on the board right now. Yeah, and Worthy would not be a good pick. Um I'm going to go ahead then and I'm going to put my chips on the Bengals. I'm going to take Joe Burrow. Get the T Higgins stack. Yeah. Now Kyle, you lost Murray and Burrow, are you sad? I thought about Burrow, but uh I probably would have passed here. I need a running back and I'm glad Dave Montgomery got to me, so I'm going to take him here. All right, you pair Montgomery with Pacheco. You got Chase Olave and Pickens with Mark Andrews. That's a good-looking team. Um, one Kyler, though, would make it look just even better. Uh, Terry McLaurin, uh, Addison right now at 609, not knowing what his situation is. Dak at 610. Swift and Reed finishing out the round. We'll take a break and jump into the seventh. All right, Najee goes at 701, Evan Ingram at 702. I was looking at Evan Ingram in the seventh round here. I was thinking about it. High PPR opportunity. Worthy, Odunze, and Rice off the board. Kyle, you're back on the clock. Um, where are you going? There is some running backs that I'm okay with, like Mostert and Jonathan Brooks, I think, are the highest. I, I can't do Zamir White for my own personal health. Um so I think I'm going to go with Brooks and just go with the second half kind of upside. Well, who's Brooks pick? Mm, no, no, <laughs> busted. No, not at all. <laughs> Jonathan Brooks is the pick in That's the seventh round, sucks. which Jason had an exclamation of disappointment. So no Xavier Worthy or Jonathan Brooks for you, Jason. Mike, you're back on the clock. So I'm also so looking at the running back position, Zamir White. I I just do not know what to do with him. Uh, the three guys that I would be really considering here, Zamir White, Mostert, Zach Moss. If I go Moss, I am really heavy on the Cincinnati Bengals. If I go Mostert, I mean, the, I'm, I'm pretty I'm heavy on Bengals and the Miami Dolphins. And Zamir is the way out. But I just – I when, when it's finally – it's looking me in the face, I don't want to do it, guys. I do not want to – Really? I just – when you hold up his, his yeah. the mirror. Yeah, and I look at myself and do yeah. I really want to draft Samir White? It's it's difficult. I'm gonna go dolphin heavy. Dang gummit. <laughs> Man. Raheem Mostert off the board. You should say the name. Raheem um, Mostert, I'm sorry. Raheem Mostert off the board was the pick. I was rudely interrupted by a dang Jason gummit. was very disappointed. I am on the board. He already knows my pick. I actually made a pretty calculated bet that I didn't disclose when I drafted Kyler Murray knowing that I would need another wide receiver, knowing which wide receiver I'm in love with this year at this stage in the draft. So Calvin Ridley is coming home to Papa. Yeah, that was the most, I saw that at the last turn. I was like, oh, gosh, this is lining up. Ex like That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Jason had written, uh, what did you write on your board there, Calvin? I, Calvin Ridley, Andy. Yeah, I look, uh, come on, man. 708, Yeah, I mean, pass-heavy team, gunslinger, downfield thrower, um, Calvin Ridley to me is the best I could have gotten for upside at 708. Like there is a to me, like where did George Pickens go in this draft? He went at 506. George Pickens, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley two and a, a quarter rounds later. To me, those are very similar outcomes for those mm. two players. I would, Not everybody views it that way. I like both of them. Two and a quarter rounds, but probably like a five round difference in production. In your for Pickens being better, yeah, yeah, in your in your opinion, yeah, 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 uh, I'm taking Ridley, and you can, you know what, you can enjoy the ride. It's going to be great. 
Jason, you're on the clock. None of your players are available. Who do you want? That is correct. I wanted Raheem Moster or Jonathan Brooks. They are out of the equation, so I'm going to take a player I keep talking up. I I believe that the Chargers are going to be more... Yeah, I knew who this was. More, I should have written that on my board. <laughs> they're going to be more efficient than what their ADP currently is reflecting. Um, and I'm taking the bet, the gamble. I mean, it could be Quinn Johnson, Joshua Palmer. I believe Ladd McConkey will be the number one target in this offense. As an early rookie uh, wide receiver pick, I'll, I'll add him to the roster. So just to run it back, Jason, as A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, and now Ladd McConkey at wide out, Kincaid and Jalen Hurts in the onesies, Kyron and Ramondre. You're back on the clock, Jason. Chubb win at 710. We'll be watching that ADP. Godwin, Hopkins, Zamir White, Deontay Johnson, and – uh, we've got Hollywood at 8.03. So, Jason, you're back on the clock. I am back on the clock, um, and it's basically between two players here, Pollard and Zach Moss. I've got Zach Moss higher in my rankings, always been my dude. I do think he fits in great for the Cincinnati Bengals offense, and I could use a little bit more since you know I've just got Stevenson as my second. I think Zach Moss is a perfect fit for the team. Yeah. All right, I – Took Ridley knowing I wanted to come back around at wide receiver and take one of the rookies that I like to give me some upside. I kicked the wide receiver can down the road. I have Cup and Ridley. Jason took McConkey. He was one of the guys in the group. And uh, But Brian Thomas, who I really like, is on the board with upside, and I'm going to take him at 805. All right. My pick is pretty easy here. I'm going to take Christian Watson, Green Bay Packers wide receiver, who I Jaden Reed is – the preferred player of the group of the crowd going he went at 612 but just a reminder Jaden Reed is a slot wide receiver Christian Watson would was the target leader whenever everybody was on the field and I'll take a, a bet here that they fix the hamstring so are we I think we're both you and I are both on the you're, Christian you're Watson, Watson side and I I presume Andy you're on the Jaden Reed side yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm not off of Jaden Reed. I'm on I the just... Jaden Reed side for sure. I mean, I think Jaden Reed has um, like has a guaranteed output that's not going to disappoint you. I think Watson has extremely great upside and a complete, you know, a, a huge risk. Collapse of a downside. Yeah, yeah. so Kyle went with Jalen Warren at 807. Ferguson goes off the board. Love, Pollard, Javante, and Austin Eckler. Eckler's usage in Washington will be very interesting this year. Um, could be a value. I still believe that. Trey Benson at 901, Zeke at 902, Keon Coleman, another one of the rookies off the board. Then Njoku, Caleb Williams, and Kyle goes with Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. So Chase, Olave, Pickens, and Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, Kyle's team, Pacheco, Montgomery, Brooks, and Warren, his running backs with Mark Andrews at tight end and no quarterback yet. Mike, you are on the clock in the ninth. Just took Watson. So – this is an interesting setup. I don't know that I've run into this ADP wise. Uh, I had essentially punted the tight end position, was just gearing up for like Jake Ferguson is my is the parachute at the tight end position for me this year. He went two picks after Christian Watson, and then as the turn came back out, David Njoku went, and that's fascinating because Brock Bowers is still here. I'm more on the side of I don't think Brock Bowers is going to work as a rookie for fantasy purposes, but we're I'm already in the punt tight end situation. And it's the just ask the like like legit a strategy that I try to in I'm I'm older, I'm more chilled out with my opinions of just like leaving more margin of what if I'm wrong? What if I am dead wrong and Brock Bowers is the guy who uh, led Georgia like immediately in receiving, he was just he was that dude. What if he's the dude in the NFL? And he, the fact that those other tight ends went, it just kind of pushed it into me, or, or pushed the <laughs> pushed uh, Bowers onto my team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. Look, uh, Bowers dominated at Georgia where McConkey couldn't. Right, McConkey couldn't even get on the field. McConkey, like if you look at the opportunity that McConkey has in the NFL, it looks great. If you look at Bowers, it's like, okay, you went to this team that you don't have confidence in quarterback, and they drafted a tight end last year. But Bowers produced, and we like production, and he produced at a legendary level, and he kept McConkey from producing. So, yes, the margin of error of that maybe Bowers was the best wide receiver on the Georgia team by a lot. Right. And maybe the best wide receiver instead of spinning what? Um, uh, where did Malik Neighbors go? A fourth-round pick? 
Brock Bowers was the best wide receiver in, in college football in a lot of ways. So um, just did it from the tight end spot. Yeah. So it, I don't usually draft him, but it, – and it's the reason – like I'm in the, the punt area, so it's like this is little risk for my team. Cup, first couple of weeks happen, Brock Bowers is not happening, then I'll just – Grab the hotness off the waiver. I have a couple wide receiver targets that I could uh, go for here before Jason gets two picks. He might go wide receiver with at least one of them. He's only got three on the roster. The other two teams after me have four already. But I'm not going to go there because I think there's several dart throws on the same level. Um, Jameson Williams is one of those dart throws. Uh, Xavier Leggett, um, Rashid Shahid, Jerry Judy, those are all – you know, you're taking a shot on those guys. I'm going to take Gus Edwards. I'm going to take the uh, starting running back for the Chargers in the late ninth. Yeah, I, I I think that the value right now on the board is much better at running back than it is wide receiver. I need a wide receiver, but they suck here. Um, <laughs> That's how I felt. That's uh, why I, I went Gus Bus. All of the wide receivers here, like in hindsight, in hindsight, I wish that I did take someone like uh, Terry McLaurin over Rashad, uh, Ramondre Stevenson just because – um, there's a lot of running backs I actually like here, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna, you know, take best player available. Even though I would rather have a wide receiver here, and Tajay Spears, I've got ranked neck and neck with Tony Pollard, who you know is a couple rounds earlier, and uh, Tajay should be on the field. He's very explosive coming in his second year. I don't mind him. Pollard at eight ten, Spears goes. Uh, at 9.09, you're right back on the clock, Jason, but a couple more of those running backs did go. Singletary, Brian Robinson, Hawkinson and Goddard are gone. Tua and Brock Purdy are gone. Uh, I believe you have every position satisfied, so you got three picks left in the draft. You can take anything you want. I do have every position satisfied. I am still dissatisfied with the wide receivers on the board. It would either be taking the shot at Jamison Williams. you never be satisfied, Jay? <laughs> I can never be satisfied. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pull an Andy Holloway and keep loading up on these running backs. And I'm going to take Jerome Ford, who I think gets off to a very strong start. We've um, had a lot of debate on Jerome yeah. Ford in the office lately. Um, it's a bet but, again, th but none of us would disagree with taking him at 10 4 That's an incredible value on the potential. It doesn't matter how uh, healthy Chubb is. It doesn't matter the risk of Devonta Freeman around. Oh, what did I just De say? Devonta <laughs> Freeman. <laughs> De Devonta Foreman. Foreman. Around the goal line, Jerome Ford at ten oh four is um at least in the beginning part of the year gonna be guaranteed production. Well, I, I'm glad I waited on Jameson Williams. I could take that shot now at ten oh five, so I will. I do need to pick up a tight end in my next two picks. Mike and Kyle on the board next. All right, I am on the clock here. Let's see. ADP wise, the wide receivers, Cortland Sutton, Adnai Mitchell, Dobbs. Do you ever consider going the uh tandem tight ends? Strategy that's oh, getting really big with Michael, Bowers and Michael Mayer. Oof. I haven't like thought about it. Like double just now. Raider tight end that oh. a lot of people are doing it. If that, you want to be, okay. if you want to be cool, that offense, yeah, it, it should score so many okay. points. Just pause real quick. Okay, I've thought it over. Okay, I'm not gonna do it. Oh All right. man, well, and well. I am gonna take look at at Michael this point Mayer. in the draft. <laughs> How did you know? Yeah. At this point, because you're you're like you're taking your shot, uh, like part of it, I want to chase offense, so I will take Curtis Samuel, who could be the number one wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. I like there's a lot of guys that it could be, and Curtis just happens to be one of them. Can we just I'll, all admit that there's going to be about four or five different wide receiver threes on that team? Uh, and that Sh could be. It Shakir, could be the game. like Shakir doesn't get drafted. But right, isn't but, there a chance to kill? Yes. Shakir's the best receiver they have. In my opinion, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it could happen. Honestly, I like Curtis Samuel a lot. When I didn't like the wide receivers, I would have taken him. Except I've got Dalton Kincaid. I've got the bet on him being the number mm -hmm. one target, so I didn't want to double up there. I have, um, I have Khalil, Sh Khalil Shakir with one more fantasy point than Curtis Samuel in my. Do you, but you, in my you still have uh, Keon Coleman as the number one wide receiver? I have him as the number one wide receiver. Okay. Yeah. Which he's in the in the group. He certainly could. All right, Kyle is on the clock, and I bet he's going to make a pick any second now. Because I, I you, waited oh, he's on back. quarterback. Yeah, I yeah. waited on quarterback. Fun and... fact: Kyle lost power halfway through the show. <laughs> he was drafting from his phone. He's in the middle of thunderstorms, and so you didn't hear from him. Not because I banned him from the show, but because 
he had no power. <laughs> uh, who'd you go with, Jaden Daniels? Yeah, I waited. I waited a little bit and went with Daniels as the last quarterback that I was pretty excited to have, and it also gives me a chance to swing for the fences. And I'm just gonna go for. It. I'm gonna go with Jahan Dotson. I knew yeah. that was coming. So the Daniels <laughs> Jahan <laughs> Dotson finale to the draft. Um, Dotson. I'm a little. Oh, no, there's Dotson. Dotson here. Barely. Oh. Uh, Kyle is um, he's doing it, and uh, Mike, you're on the clock. So uh, second to last pick, Jerome Ford is in this list. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott is in this list, but those both of those guys are gone. I had tweeted out that over the last five years, we see about eight and a half teams that don't have a running back drafted in the top twenty-four, but yet on average we see about four and a half of those teams finish with a top twenty-four guy because it's like projecting offenses is just so difficult. And but I feel very confident projecting that Dallas will have a very high powered offense. So I it's probably Zeke. Honestly, it probably is. But leave the margin that it could be end up being Rico Dowdle, the the more valuable player for the Dallas backfield. So here in the eleventh, perfectly happy doing it. Um, okay. I still need a tight end. I was hoping I would be able to draft Dalton Schultz at this point. I'm gonna take Pat Fryermuth here. Um, just to not risk it or play around anymore. It's likely I'll end up a waiver wire uh, kind of situation at tight end. It might yep. end up being Taysom Hill. It could end up being Hunter Henry, who should have a, a key role in the offense. Noah Fant could get some opportunities. None of those guys are very exciting. I'm going to be the guy spinning my fab on the breakout tight end that we didn't see coming and hope that, you know, that, like last year's Jake Ferguson. I'm going to be looking for that kind of a guy. Jason, you're on the clock with two selections left. Why don't you make those back to back here? Yeah, I need some wide receivers, um, and I was really hoping that Romeo. Yeah, you only have three right now, right? Correct. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with two more wide receivers here. You seem so high T. Really hoping that Romeo Dobbs left because I wanted to Dontavian Wicks, but it feels weird to draft a it does Wicks over Dobbs, who should be more involved. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Dobbs. The the I take, need, take them both. Well. I've got a different guy I want for my last right. receiver. Um, so I'll take Dobbs here, and then my next guy I want, I know will get back to me. He is pretty much undrafted everywhere, but he projects right now to really be the number two wide receiver going into year two of the NFL, which those those two things are yeah, a we real like good thing things. to get. Um, and it's Michael Wilson of the Arizona Cardinals. Oh. I thought that might be the case. Uh, sounds like Mike didn't think that. I just I don't think it's going to work. I, I'm between Jerry Judy, who I think will be the starting slot receiver for a, a more pass-heavy team, especially to start the year in Cleveland. Um, but all, all, all of my possible selections here are like... <laughs> <laughs> I heard a... <laughs> <laughs> what? You didn't hear it? I did not. I missed it. Deucers, did you guys hear that? <laughs> okay, they're all shaking their head, yes. <laughs> 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 all right, I'm going to take Jalen Polk with 12.05. Hey, I dig it. Like me some Jalen Polk. All right. Let me so let me take a look at my team here. So I have five wide receivers and four running backs. Okay. So it, it just kind of what whatever I want to do here. In consideration players, Joshua Palmer. Uh huge. This is in consideration, I guess. Dontavian Wicks. And Hey, it's Franklin. I'm not drafting <laughs> Troy Franklin, All dude. Right, fine. Um, Suit yourself. The news on have we have we gotten any more updated news on Kendra Miller, Kyle? Maybe you've heard too, because just the the recent vibes have been bad, and that makes me sad. As uh, he seemed like a player who really could make an impact, but the, it seems like the they've the vibes have been changing. Has anybody heard anything, Kyle? Kyle? You should definitely take him here. Yeah. Just okay. So the vibes are bad. The vibes are still bad. It's bad. Okay. This is such a weird pick. Uh, I'm going to take. I'm just going to someone. Take, I'm going to take Joshua Palmer. That's a good pick. He could very well be the number. He could one be the wide number one wide receiver. Kyle, you have a final pick, and if it's Kendra Miller, you earn five dollars. <laughs> uh, it's not Kendra Miller. I, I, it's not even worth. That would have been amazing. That would have been so. <laughs> oh, would, the vibes are bad. Just kidding. They're great. I would have been so proud of him. I know. Uh, who do you got? One of the rookie running backs, Marshawn Lloyd or yep. Kimani Vidal. I'm probably going to take Lloyd. Just a better 
better offense, and I think he has a better shot to overtake. All right, we did it. We got through it. The uh, The full draft is complete, and you can follow along on the YouTube channel. Kyle, you want to read us your team here, position by position? All right. At quarterback, I have Jaden Daniels. Running back, Isaiah Pacheco. David Montgomery. At wide receiver, Jamar Chase. Chris Olave. At tight end, Mark Andrews. And my flex, I have Pickens and Jonathan Brooks right now. And then on the bench, Jalen Warren, JSN, Jahan Dotson, and Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, by, I guess, starting position. He did go starters, <laughs> which wasn't – I mean, that's fine. Yeah. That's Let's all do that. I refuse. Because you can't put it together? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just so easy the other way. <laughs> just group them positionally. Uh, Mike, go ahead. All right, positionally. <laughs> <laughs> at running back. Brees Hall, James Cook, Raheem Mostert, Rico Dowdle. Wide receivers, I have Nico, Jalen Waddle, T. Higgins, Christian Watson, Curtis Samuel, and Josh Palmer. My quarterback is Joe Burrow for that Burrow-Higgins stack. And then Brock Bowers, a surprise addition to my team. I know I'm biased, but I feel like I survived the high T start to the draft. Gibbs, ETN, Rashad White, Kamara, and Gus Bus, five starters at running back. Cooper Cup, Ridley, Brian Thomas, Jamison Williams, Polk, going to need somebody to hit there at wide out, and then Kyler Murray and Pat Fryermuth as my onesies. Cooper Cup is just like, I think he is one of the more fascinating players of, like everything I was kind of saying about Justin Jefferson of, at the end of the year, did we go, oh yeah, Cooper Cup is actually Which still is, great. It's what He we, just was hurt. We did that with Cooper Cup two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, shouldn't we all see this coming? Like I feel like there's some of that there with Cooper Cup. Yeah, that is the ironic part is that it's him again. Uh, at uh, quarterback and tight end, I've got Jalen Hurts and Dalton Kincaid. Went a little high, higher up on those guys. I'm um, stacking them with A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Lad McConkey, Romeo Dobbs, and Michael Wilson at wide receiver. At running back, I've got Kyron Williams, Ramondre Stevenson, Zach Moss, Tajay Spears, and Jerome Ford. All right, that well, is going to do it for today's show. You got nasty boys on there. Oh, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> We uh, will be back into the divisional breakdowns, jump into the NFC starting on Saturday because we're three shows a week right now. Four, if you're a member of the Foot Clan at jointhefoot.com, of course. And you can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. Subscribe, click the bell over there. Thank you, Kyle, for joining us in the middle of whatever rainstorm or weird stuff happens in other states. We have sunshine here, too much of it. And uh, check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Talk to you later, Foot Clan. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.